She uses her olive blood as lubricant. It's time for the 13 nights of Sarah Wee. Hey besties, it's Sarah. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm joined with my beautiful friend, Katie, and we're gonna be doing a drunk literacy, but not just any drunk literacy. We are combining this with a series I've been doing on my channel where I read <laughs> romance subgenres. I've already personally read dark romance for one of these videos, but Katie had never read dark romance. So I was like, what if we both read a dark romance and then we ranted about it to each other while we're <laughs> drinking alcohol. And now we're both traumatized. <laughs> now we're both traumatized, we are. So I read Promises in Pomegranates. Elena is the daughter of a mafia boss. Okay. Of course. She is supposed to be marrying this guy. I forgot his name. It's not important because another guy comes in and kills him. Oh. He's yeah. He's not the main guy. No. The Hades guy. So Elena is like... Persephone. Okay, okay. And then there's a guy that she hooked up with named Cal. She is, of course, never had sex because they're always oh, like a little way, innocent the girl. The way they idolize virginity they in these books, it's, it's actually absurd. Yeah. She's like 18, 19. No. And a this child? Man is, this man is like 32, <gasps> which I'm 32. Would I date an 18 year old? First of all, not. it's not technically illegal, but in my brain, illegal. Jail. They have sex, and he calls her his little Persephone. She gets a tattoo of a pomegranate on her ribs. This is all before she's ran marrying this random Yes! Man. She's like 18, she was like, oh, you call it Persephone, I'm gonna go pomegranate on my ribs. She is now marrying this guy who is in another mob family, whatever. It's obviously like a marriage between the families, like whatever. This man gets killed on the wedding day. And it's by Cal. His name is Cal. Why did he kill him? Because he wanted to marry her. He wants his little Persephone. Yes. <laughs> she goes to see the groom and he's dead. And then Cal's there and he's like, ha ha ha, I killed him. <laughs> and then and then he forces her to marry him in front of everyone. Her whoa, dad's whoa, whoa, whoa. there. He so blackmails he, he the dad. In and he kills the groom. And then yes. he's like, I'm the groom. Yes. Like, I, like I'm the captain now. I'm, I'm, the, the, captain I, I'm the groom now. now. Yes. And then he whisks her away to hell. No, it's a mansion that is decorated very dark academia. Honestly, it sounded great. Like, I was like, I kind of want to move in. He's a doctor because his mom had cancer. And then he, he goes, I'm going to be a doctor and I'm going to solve everything. Do we know why he does so that? much for helping his mom? I don't know. What happened? He I wanted to the, avenge her the against can, cancer. The, the cancer got her. <laughs> He's like, if I can't fight cancer, I'll commit crimes. <laughs> Apparently he's got something going on with this girl's mom, by the way. Side note. Her name is Carmen. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> he's double dipping in the family? <laughs> he had an affair with the mom. The mom of this girl he now married. They were fucking. At one point, Cal had said notes and love poems to the mom, Carmen, on her balcony before all this. But it was actually the daughter who got the poems and read them. And that's how they wound up hooking up because she was like, I think I love him and he loves me. And then he was like, mm, mm, sure, whatever. And then they fucked. Also apparently Elena, because they, I feel like they also in these books, as I've only read like two, I feel like they have to give the girl like some redeeming quality. Okay. Like it was like, oh, she's like innocent, whatever. But like also she used to get fights as a kid and she's like the roughest of the three daughters of the mob boss. And like the dad was always like, yeah, that's my girl, she's scrappy. But like it sounds like she got her ass kicked. <laughs> She wasn't good at it because she always came she, out with like black she eyes. She got her ass beat all, she every got day. Her ass beat. <laughs> she got her ass beat. So they're like, she's scrappy. And I'm like, it doesn't sound like it. And so, anyways, they go to his big house on some island off the coast of New England, which you're from New England. I didn't know there were islands off the coast of New England. Yeah, like Cape Cod? Is that, <laughs> no, wait, that's not an island. island. <laughs> He literally owns like every business on this island and so all the people that live there like love him. They're like, Cal, he kills his jobs, this is great. He kills people, but it's better. This man carved a K into her thigh. The first time they had sex or now The married. first time. So she's been having a scar that says K. That has a K for Cal. I'm not doing a good job of talking about it because this is literally how the plot went. Like it's messy. It was messy. Okay, so it's like hard to follow. Yeah, it was hard to follow. I was just like, how do we get here? So at some point they go to a they go to his bar that he owns and Cal leaves to check on something on one of his a million other businesses. And there's a waitress there um, that Atlanta, of course, is jealous of because she's like, it's my husband, even though like he manipulates me. <laughs> 
<laughs> he leaves a bouncer in charge of her and she tries to leave and the bouncer's like, you're not supposed to leave. Just like that. And then she goes, I can do whatever the fuck I want. The bouncer like injects her with something because <gasps> she's going crazy. She runs away before she passes out and she runs into like a bus station. She goes in there and she passes out there before mm -hmm. a cow can find her because mm -hmm. of course now he's like the dutiful up and is like, where are you? Where are you? Okay. And she's like, I'm not telling you because she has the Stockholm syndrome going on, but she also is kind of just like, this is fucked up and I kind of want to leave. And this is the point where I was like, do I hate Elena? And then I still do. She passes out, but these other people in the mafia find her. Basically do everything but sexually assault her while she's passed out <gasps> because they make it look like Cal did it. They recarved the K in her thigh to make it like bleed. We find out that the guys work for Elena's dad. <gasps> and he said they could do that to her? Yeah. They break the story to the press that their daughter has been kidnapped by Cal and they want her back. Even though the dad basically told, sold her off to Cal to get the other guy taken care of. So we find out that the guy she was supposed to marry, <gasps> her dad wanted him her dead. Her dad wanted him dead. Okay, but do we have any backstory on the, on the mafia? Like what's going on? Like It's just the mafia. <laughs> it's just the mafia. <laughs> Cal finds one of the guys who attacks her, brings him back to that weird little mansion where they have this shed outside that like no one is allowed to go in. And Atlanta's like, what's in there? And then she finds out that because he's a doctor, he has like a like a table saw and shit in there. I don't and feel like doctors have table saws. For I don't humans. think they do. I don't think they do. He wears scrubs to then just disembowel and cut this man up. And then he comes in to his office and Elena is there and he's covered in blood in his scrubs. It's giving Dr. Death a fuck. Surprise. Wow, Surprise. there's blood everywhere. There's blood everywhere. Mafia romance loves fucking in some blood. It's in they in every book. Do. They, they love every blood. Book, every book. We find out then during some family dinner that they go to that um, while they're in town that the mom and Cal were having an affair. So she cheated on Cal with yet another man in mm. the mafia. <laughs> Cal hits Carmen in the face with his gun after threatening to shoot her because she told Elena about their affair. So during this dinner, Elena goes, you fucked my mom? You fucked my mom? So she didn't know. She had no idea. But Carmen is awful. Like she's terrible. She doesn't give a shit about her daughter. She tries to embarrass her. She only wants Cal back. So they go to the recital. <laughs> I go to the recital, the ballet recital. Cal says, when you're ready to talk, come and find me. And then she says, stop making this out to be my fault. You lied, you fucked up. If you don't want yeah, to- You fucked my mom. You fucked my mom. <laughs> if, if I don't want to talk to you, I don't have to. So then he also keeps calling her little one, which I don't like little because- one. That sounds gross. I don't like that because there's the age difference, 32 and 18. But you know that right like, here? A little foot from the land before time. <laughs> She decides she wants to anger bang him in this box at the recital because her mom and her dad are in the box next door. So they'll hear it? She wants to hear it. She wants her mom to hear her. Elena looks at him and goes, I want my mom to know that she cannot make you come like I do. Penis ejaculates <laughs> come in the same way every time. Like maybe he just has fun more when he's coming. I know, but, but like, like, he's like, like the, the penis be penising. Like, it's like, like <laughs> Honestly, I feel like that, that I more would like, be like the title of this whole video. The penis be penis thing. With women, that's accurate. With men, yeah. you just rub that thing. It's gonna shoot some. It's gonna shoot some stuff out. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> this man, not only like, is he like? Oh, I mean, yeah, I would like to have sex with you. That I mean, I don't care about the reason. He loves the reason. He says, "Horny little bitch." <laughs> You just want to make mommy jealous. So, <laughs> these are my notes. Rapid fire, live tweeting while I was reading this while drinking wine. He dug another cut into her thigh while going down on her. Why does he have a knife on hand every time they're having sex? <laughs> all the time, all the time. <laughs> he's like, he's like, oh, we're having sex? Let me give it out my coffee ah. knife. Cal licked the blood and then Elena licked her own cum off of his fingers. Then they start kissing and he talks about how he can taste both of the things in his mouth, the cum and the blood. Vitalic salty cum. <laughs> she uses her own blood as lubricant. That literally wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. I feel like it's not. You need like a more. It's not viscous Yeah, yeah, I was about to say that. You need more viscosity. <laughs> the dirty talk in this scene is unparalleled, but in a, in a terrible way. <laughs> he says, 
I'm gonna fill this pussy up to reward my wife for being such a good little slut. Stop. <laughs> you are a good cum slut, aren't you? They had sex in the box seat at the recital. And, and like, then they finally came and he was like, you like me again, this is great. We made your mom and jealous. And then she was just like, bitch, you thought. And she got up, got mad again, and walked out. But they're like legally married, so she's gonna come back eventually. Of course. Yeah. Elena then shows back up at Cal's place because he sent her annulment papers. Basically, she shows up and she's like, what the fuck is this? Wait, wait, wait. so she sent annulment papers or he sent annulment papers? He, he sent her annulment papers and she shows up oh, with them. Oh, so she's like mad. She's like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, she's like, I didn't say that I wanted it. She's like, I, wa I walked out on you because you fucked my mom. Because you fucked your mom. Also, but I didn't, I didn't say I, I wanted I feel like a week into a marriage, a week, a few days, I don't if know. This has only been one week? But I don't know. I don't know. It hasn't been a lot of time. Their weeks are a lot more eventful than my weeks. So, basically, they start making out, they have sex, they're back together. Elena now cuts an E onto his chest. And he cuts an A onto her other thigh. What's A mean? His last name. I forgot what it is. <laughs> But now he's like, you have a K and an A. And it's, then it's a river energy. A river <laughs> energy. A river energy. What does that even mean? Goodbye. Oh. <laughs> Cal wakes her up with a kiss the next morning and says, no morning breath. And he says, we've shared every other bodily fluid. That's where you draw the line. Morning breath is not a fluid though. It's not, but to be worried about your morning breath when your blood has literally been in another person's mouth. Well, she's apparently a vampire because she loves blood. I was honestly waiting for that plot twist in this. I was like, oh, they're vampires. <laughs> <laughs> Bella, where are you been, Loka? Oh my God, you would have died. I was saying, one of the books that I read specifically for my Patreon, uh -huh. there was so much period blood involved in the sex scenes. Why would I die from that? Do you think I would like that? No, die in like a bad way. Oh, oh. <laughs> like you would pass away from like how gross it was. I was getting no, very like, offended like, like very quickly. He would like, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that at all. I don't like that. Elena wants to go to school to be a writer. What's she gonna write about? Her mom fucking her That's husband? what I'm saying. <laughs> What's she gonna write about? She, of course she wants to be a writer. I think this is another self-insert. This is a self-insert for sure. It's a self-insert. Yeah. She wants to go to school to be a writer. And the author's like, like that's me. I'm Elena. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's me. I bet you're wondering how I die. <laughs> in the epilogue, they have a little girl and Cal says she has the most beautiful mom in the world and all her guy friends will always want to come over. Awkward because Cal fucked Elena's mom. But then Elena says the boys won't even be allowed in the house and Cal says he's more open-minded than that. Maybe she'll like girls and I'll have to worry about them breaking her heart and said And I said, okay, we do love a progressive mafia he man. Said, he said, I love the alien LGBT. Yeah. <laughs> he said, and one last note, ally. The end. I apologize. You guys are not even prepared for the book that I read. Like the premise of this book is so insane. So the book that I read is called Lords of Pain. And it already oh, upset. Yeah, Lords of Pain. And I was in pain when I was reading it. Like genuinely in actual <laughs> pain while I was reading it. I'm already um, It opens with our main character. Her, her name is Story. And <laughs> she's a teenager at the start of the book. Like th there's a, a, like a time forward eventually. But like at the start of the book, she's like 17. She's currently using a sugar baby site to earn money because she wants to eventually get out of town and start a new life. And she goes downstairs to mm. get her clothes out of the driver. I had to say dry your, yep. the dryer. Out of the driver. <laughs> she gets accosted by her stepbrother Killian's two friends, Tristan and Raph. So that's what you need to know. The three main guys in this book is Killian, her stepbrother, and his two best friends, Tristan and Raph. And she's always been afraid of her stepbrother and his friends. She tries to stay away from them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, she goes downstairs and they're there in the laundry room and they're like, oh, we like your tits. They're like really accosting <laughs> her, right? I actually wrote down some quotes for you of how they're speaking to her. Mm. That nervous energy, it gets my dick hard. I like the begging, Raph adds, his deep voice shifting into a falsetto. Please don't, it hurts. Jail. Pretty shitty way to treat someone who was just trying to give you a compliment. It's the gaslighting for me. Don't cry now, we're just having a good time. You want us to have a good time, right? Like it literally sounds like a textbook example of like, if you were like to look up rape culture in a textbook. It has all of those quotes. Literally all the quotes. <laughs> Verbatim. So eventually she tries to get her stepbrother Killian to intervene. She's like, please like stop your friends. Like they're like 
basically being really gross to me. Yeah. And he tells her that he hates her because her mom married his dad. And the direct quote that he says is, your white trash slut of a mother wrecks my family and brings her little whorling with her. And you can't figure out why I don't like you. I don't give a shit what these two do to you. They could both fuck you at the same time. And you know what I'd do? I'd laugh. <laughs> So then they proceed to sexually assault her as a group. I, I swear to God that we are like maybe 10 to 20 pages into this book. Were you still in the prologue? What, what, yes. What happened to Hello? How are you? So they, they start assaulting her. So basically what they do is, so Wrath is like pinning her down, like grabbing her arms. And then Trist Tristan is like, you're gonna give me a blowjob. And then that's when she was like, Killian, stop them. And then Killian in the background is just, He's masturbating. No, I'm already thinking about promises and pomegranates. Like, oh, what a sweet love story. <laughs> no, no, your book honestly sounds wholesome in comparison to mine. So okay. this is where I'm gonna. It was the, the Notebook. This is where I'm gonna give the trigger warning. If if sexual assault upsets you, you might want to click off the video now. Like, enjoy whatever Katie gave you. Yeah. And just click off now because the yeah. amount of rape energy that comes into the rest of this is just out of this world. So you know, click off if you need to, and I totally get it, and we can check in together in the next video. He. He comes. No. And then he goes like this and he closes her mouth and forces her to swallow it. I don't it. like that. No. I like that. I know, I know, I know, I know. To I, a child. To a child. They're also children, but like not, that's not an excuse. So then we get a time jump and it's a couple years later and they're all in college. And the three boys are now the head of a fraternity. All of the, the fraternities have nicknames. So they're called the Lords and there's like the Barons and the Dukes and the Princes. Like they all have like royalty names. Every year they audition a girl and they get a sex slave for the fraternity. What the fuck? <laughs> no, literally. And they all have a different name for it. So like if you're like the girl for the lords, you're called the lady. If you're for the barons, the baroness. So each fraternity has their own kind of process for how they audition these girls. Mm. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, you gotta finish your drink for this one. And I'm so unhappy. we kind of go into the start where they're like auditioning the girls and they're bragging about how they're basically allowed to assault their sex slave. And the princes are the only fraternity that treats their princess well. They're, they're like it's literally quoted as like, oh, the princes, they treat their girl like a, like a princess basically. And then the, the direct quote that they say is, the princes don't even count, they're total pussies. This truly sounds like something that would be made into a Hulu docu-series, like a sex cult vibe. And we're led to believe that all the girls on campus actually want these positions with all the fraternities because they're like, oh, like, I'll be the baddest bitch on campus if I'm like the sex slave for like one of these like fraternities. And they're not like secretive about it. They're like, no, it's, like, it's, like, it's like a well-known thing on campus. Like they actually, the girls who- Who runs this school? Who is the dean <laughs> of this university? I, you know, the dean's like this. <laughs> yeah, he said, Anyways, boys, <laughs> boys, boys will be boys. So obviously we're in this time jump, and so Killian's introduction on page and his POV. So all the characters get their I'm own. I'm upset POV. because I keep thinking of Killian Murphy whenever you say Killian. I'm like he would never. His introduction scene is him having sex with this random girl, and he literally thinks to himself that it's hard to get off because he's not hurting her. Like he literally thinks to himself like, oh, it's getting harder and harder for me to come if I'm not hurting the girl I'm having sex with. Therapy. And I immediately wanted to call 911. Mm -hmm. This book was written by not one woman, but two women. No, I was literally about to ask if it was written by a man. No, it's written by two women. They start auditioning girls for the role of their lady. This is where we go back into story's point of view. So story's coming back into the story. No pun, no pun intended. Follow us here. She has decided to come to Forsyth University and be the guy's lady despite them literally raping her in the prologue. She knows it's them. No, she literally knows it's them. She has sought them out because she's like, I'm gonna go be their lady. Like, I'm, I'm gonna go partake in this activities on campus. Her reason is honestly so whack. It's because, okay, so as you know, the book opened with her being a sugar baby, right? Online. Uh -huh. Which uh -huh. we were like, okay girl, like, get your bag. Although she was 17, so it was kind of sus. She ended up closing her sugar baby account just because I don't really know why, but she closed it. And there was a guy that had like been buying photos from her named Ted and he started stalking her. Her theory is she knows that Killian and his friends are like the baddest men that she's ever interacted with. She's like, if I go be their lady, then they'll protect me from my stalker. Oh! <laughs> I guess, 
yes. Sorry. That, like I told you, like her reasoning is so stupid. And listen, I need to interject right now and say that I've heard a lot of stories of women who've had stalkers in their life. And if you have a stalker, going to the police will not solve it. Because unless your stalker has actually committed a crime against you, the police don't give a fuck. And so I know that it's very difficult as a woman mm -hmm. to actually get a restraining order or do anything that will protect you from your stalker. I feel like there has to be an in-between between going to the police and turning to the men who literally raped you three years ago. <laughs> like there has to be some sort of fallback plan. Women wrote this? No, two women. <laughs> they literally, they look me in the eye right now. They, they went like this, they looked each other in the eye and they were like, yes, let's keep writing. They said, also, let's go, bitch. Also, but they decide to let her be their lady because she drops a big bomb. No. She's still a virgin. <laughs> let me tell you something about these two female authors. Their one goal in life <laughs> is to spread a virginity kink. Which makes no sense to me because these books are probably written for consumption by women. And I do not yeah. personally know a single woman who has a virginity kink that is very much a male thing. But basically, um, in Killian's perspective, we find out that when he and Story lived together in high school, because obviously their parents were married mm -hmm. and they're like mm -hmm. step-siblings, he used to sneak into her room at night. And she's a very hard sleeper apparently. And he would take his dick and rub it on her lips. No. And leave his pre-cum <laughs> all over <laughs> <laughs> because he liked when they would go down to breakfast the next day and he, and he would know that he was there. <laughs> oh god, that actually made me a little nauseous. Yeah, no, me too. Then we flash forward to Tristan's POE and we find out that they have a point system going for how they deal with the lady. Between the three of them, they really want her virginity. Like they, uh, their nickname for her is Cherry because her like, uh, like when she was a sugar baby, her profile name was like Sweet Cherry or something. So they call her Cherry. And, and they're like, uh, basically, so for every act they perform with her, they get a different level of points. And so whoever has the most points at the end of the school year gets to take her virginity. They say, Take cherries, sweet cherry. <laughs> you were. I'm still floored that this was written by women. No, if you told me that an incel living in his mom's basement wrote this, I would absolutely believe On you. brand. Story ends up signing the contract and it's just full of fun things. So there's a whole list of things that she has to like do while Yay. she's the lady. She can't wear a bra when she's in the frat house. She's like literally not allowed to wear a bra. She has to wax her pussy or shave it or whatever. She like is not allowed to have hair in her other regions. And she just has to do whatever they want whenever they want. Like those are all of the things. And the only thing that she adds to the contract is that she doesn't want them to have sex with other girls like while she's the lady. So the first night that Story is in the frat house, she decides randomly to like go exploring and she goes into Rath's room and the guys are like out at a party and she ends up falling asleep in Rath's room like listening to records. But when she wakes up, Rath is playing the piano and apparently he's like very good at the piano. So when she like wakes up, she's like, oh my God, I don't remember putting this record it's on. It's giving- It sounds so good. Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> Literally. To punish her, he like grabs her and like puts her on top of his piano. Cause of course she's like this little tiny girl. He can like- She's so around. small. She's so tiny. <laughs> she actually compliments him. Cause he's like, as a punishment, you have to listen to me play the piano. And she's like, well, you're actually like, pretty good at piano. So it's like not. Ew. Um, and this is the part where I swear to God when I was reading this, I die you're gonna die laughing at this. When she's <laughs> sitting on top of the piano, she tries to compliment him and she says, I didn't know you could read music. Sorry, that's right, like you laugh every time. <laughs> so Rath gets like you don't even understand how mad he gets at her. He like gets in her face and um he's like really like screaming at her because apparently Rath is illiterate. <laughs> He can't read. He literally can't read. And so when when she said, I didn't know you could read music, he's like, you don't know anything about me. I can't read at all. So flash forward, um, she's on campus and mm -hmm. she, her stepdad actually shows up on campus and he's talking to her. And this was where I started to adopt the theory that I think her stalker is her stepdad because she kept saying like at the beginning of the book, like when she was like being the sugar baby whenever that she's like, I have to get out of this house, whatever. But her mom like married this rich guy and they're like living in a mansion. So it's like, why would you want to leave this like new life that your it's mom found? Mansion? Yeah, it's like the stepdad is like really rich. And so then Tristan takes her over to like this random like kind of secluded balcony and he forces her to let him finger bang her. Because um, exhibitionism gets a lot of points on their like point system. Oh. Which by the way, you need to know that story doesn't know about the point system, only they know about the point system. And we know because we're like reading everyone's perspective. <laughs> also, then we get confirmation that back in the day, her stepdad did do something weird. So the reason that Killian hates her is because when she first became his stepsister, he was convinced that his dad brought her home with her mom because she was supposed to be his sex toy. One day, uh, he's like at home when they were like teenagers, he saw 
her in her dad's office and her dad his dad was drunk and he was like touching Story's boobs and so then he was like oh instead of like believing like oh maybe my dad is like preying upon a young girl my dad he, is a piece no, of shit no he goes she's seducing him because oh again Killian knows nothing slut shaming is his mo like he's like i will slut shame find out not only is she is a virgin She's also no never kissed a guy. <laughs> my eyes are gonna roll so far into the back of my head that you're only gonna see the whites of my eyes. So that when they're driving her to school, Wrath is like, "Well, we gotta teach you how to kiss," and he's like, Burr. and he starts like kissing her in front of her. I and bet then... he still does the weird guy face. <laughs> <laughs> so when they get to campus, after Wrath kisses her in the car, um, she offers him. She's like, "Hey, Wrath, I, I know you can't read." I'll tutor you. <laughs> He's like, how dare you say I can't read? And he like, he like literally grabs her, like, like aggressively grabs her and is like, like hurting her. And he gets really... how dare you call me out on something and then, and then true. He's, like, he's like, you're a dumb bitch that doesn't know how to kiss. Even though he's the one that wanted to have her first kiss in the car. So they end up having a party at their house before the big game. So something you need to know about Killian is that he's like a big football star. That's how he got into the college. So he's like really good at football. So I mentioned that in the contract <gasps> that Story signed, she made it say that like the guys weren't allowed to fuck other girls like while she was the lady mm -hmm. but Killian in the contract said that like he's allowed to do whatever like pre-game ritual he needs to get prepared for his game so his pre-game ritual is that he has a threesome before like that's how he gets all his like pent-up energy out before you like plays football story actually goes upstairs to get like a sweater out of her room because she's cold and she hears that like in Killian's bedroom he's like having trouble getting it up for these girls because he's like not really into it and he like blames the girls because again Killian will never take responsibility for anything he does so he's like your pussy's as dry as the Sahara it's like sandpaper like you're the reason I can't get it up whatever and then one of the girls is like it's okay you can put it in my ass blah blah oh anyway, my god yeah. mm -hmm. the girls end up leaving because he's like get the fuck out of here and then he leaves the room and he finds Story in the hallway and he's like oh were you listening it's not my goddamn fault those sluts with their fake tits and phony moans it's like a fucking low budget porn show in there do you know how annoying it is to never have a single honest fuck it's pathetic he says through clenched teeth they've been fucked and manhandled by half the guys in the school all i want is a good lay before the game to sell some of this pent-up energy so that i can focus on the field instead of my cock i'm sorry when you play football <laughs> on a field tackling other boys in their 20s all you focus on is your cock is your <laughs> Also, my other thought too was he was talking about their fake tits or whatever, and I'm like, how many 18 to 20 year old girls do you think have fake tits? Like, That's what I'm like, saying. like boob jobs cost like a lot of money. This boy has anger issues, but he's just throwing darts in the dark at what causes them. Story ends up telling him off because she's like, she, she honestly, it's kind of a slay moment where she's like, the reason that you can't get it up is because all these girls that you're having sex with, you know that deep down they're faking it because no one could ever like you because you're like. A mean ass bitch basically honestly and so but he gets so angry at her he grabs her no shoves her to the ground no and she's afraid he's gonna rape her but instead he rips her dress off her top and he titty fucks her <laughs> and then and then, he, and, then, and, then he, and then he comes all over like her facial region but here's the kicker here's the oh kicker God. is that um where's we, we've been led to believe at this point that story is a little is a little crazy slut because while he's pinning her down like he's literally pinning her down to the point where his knees are like on her arms like he like his entire body weight is on her on the ground she has an orgasm when he has not even touched her clit. So then Tristan notices that she's missing from the party and he sees that Killian comes downstairs and he's all like, hmm, I'm so happy now. And she's like, he's like, oh my God, what do you do? Because again, they're obsessed with her virginity. So he's like, oh my God, did Killian like... So basically he goes into the room and he's like, did he like... You know? Mm. And she's like, no. So he says something along the lines of like, well, you used to live with him. Like, you know how his anger gets. Like, he was just mad. That's why he did that. And then she goes, you know what I remember the most? You doing the raping. Because in the, in the prologue, he's the one that forced her to do a blowjob on him. So she's Jesus. like, so she's like, you raped me. And then he, she goes, what? You didn't think you raped me because you, your dick didn't enter my vagina? And this part is so insane because this is the most amount of self-awareness from these authors <laughs> where I'm like, you understand rape culture. Which another thing about yeah. this book that's so insane to me is it glorifying rape culture to the point where like rape culture is already so prevalent on college campuses. Yeah. Why would you romanticize it? Yeah. Then, this is in Tristan's point of view. He goes, I raise a finger. 
It's interesting, actually. The legal definition of rape varies on, I pause, possibly it's not the best time to recite my vast knowledge of sexual assault law. Instead, I opt for, come on story, let's not be obtuse here. You had a choice that night. And then she starts crying and Tristan starts to feel a little bit bad, but he keeps thinking to himself, oh my God, I hate when girls cry. They're so ugly when they cry. I feel like I'm reading like a crying, like, like you know, like when police make police reports, like <laughs> I'm reading yeah. a police report right now. So fast forward, Story starts tutoring Raph because he's failing school because he, he can't read. He can't read, but <laughs> he's so, in college. Yeah, in their first tutoring session, he keeps blaming her because he's like, I can't focus on my books because I'm so horny because of you. <laughs> and she's like, Okay, well, I'm like the sex slave of the thing. Why do you even just force me to have sex? And so this is this is Rath's redeeming quality. He goes, well, I can't force you because I'm only turned on if a girl's willing. His kink is consent. Wow. <laughs> and she's like, what do you mean? Like, you held me down a couple years ago when, like, Tristan was like, and he's like, no, 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 no. Like, now I'm, like, only into consent. So then Story's like, okay, well, fine. If you can't study, should I just, like, give you a blowjob? And she thinks to herself, like, maybe I'll enjoy the blowjob if I'm willing to give it. What a novel concept. Okay, so fast forward. They have to go dinner with their parents because their parents are obviously still married, like, the, mm -hmm. the dad and the mom. And so, Still? tell me why when they're at dinner, this is so random in the narrative, but basically uh -huh. like, Story is like eating olives and they're like salty and she goes, hmm, this tastes like rat's cock. <laughs> why was that in the book? I don't know. And then, so then they open mail because there's been a bunch of mail coming to the house because they don't live at home anymore. And one of the pieces of mail is from her stalker Ted. So they open it and there's a, a pair of underwear in there and it's like a pair of underwear. So like when she became the lady of the house, they bought a bunch of clothes for her and stuff and it's a piece of lingerie that they bought for her. You would think that Killian would be like, oh my God, why is there underwear in the mail? Why do you have a threatening note here like from this random stalker man? But no, 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 no. Killian immediately starts choking her out and he's like, you're fucking around with your guy. <laughs> so he immediately starts death grip choking her. <laughs> doesn't listen to her. She tries to be like, no, like, like I have a stalker. And he's like, he's like, you're a whore. Killian is irredeemable. Is no, that a word? Yeah, yeah, irredeemable, absolutely. <laughs> so then he's so angry at her. He doesn't even consult the other guys. When they get back to the frat house, mm -hmm. he's like, I have to punish her. They line up all the fraternity brothers in this basement, right? Mm -hmm. And he grabs Story and he's like, no. Mm -hmm. No. So he's like, you're going to give me a blowjob in front of all these guys. And she looks him in the eye and she says, if you force me to do this right now, I will never have feelings for you. Like, I, there's not there's not a chance in this, un this universe that I will ever have emotional feelings for you if you force me in front of these other men. And he's like, get on your knees, girl. No. So then he, for he forces her. So obviously, Wrath and Tristan were there. And at this point, we've, we've been like endeared to Wrath and Tristan. We're like, they care about her. Like, they, like yes, they raped the her. The bare minimum. They, they raped her a couple years ago, but now they care about yeah. her. Like, they have feelings for her. Yeah. And so they corner so Killian after, and they're like, why didn't you consult us? That was such a like fucked up thing to do. And basically, Tristan is like, it's not my fault that you guys are pussy whooped by her. Like, it's a game. Like, you know that I got points for doing that. Blah, blah, blah. Like, Killian says Yeah, yeah, Killian says that. Like, he's like, he's like, you guys are just like little pussies. Like, she's a whore. And I've always known she was a whore or whatever. Because again, Killian doesn't take responsibility for things. He just likes to slut shame girls. Even though he's the one that wants to put his dick inside girls, but whatever. Yeah. Okay, then fast forward. Ew. Story randomly gets kidnapped by an opposing fraternity. Oh. So, the Barons found out that she was a virgin and they were like going wild over that information and so like the lords are like the lead frat on campus. Their baroness is like what am I like chopped liver? Well like, no what's no, going no. So on? the baroness is actually the one that did like the spy like the intel so basically oh. she tried to befriend story in like a bathroom at a bar and she was like oh girl we can be friends and she was like well we're not allowed because there's like a rule that like all of the like girls among the fraternities are not supposed to be friends and she's like, you can confide in me. And she's like, yeah, I'm a virgin. And then the Baroness is like, oh, I'll protect your secret. They decide to kidnap her. At first, we're like led to believe that it's her stalker kidnapping her, mm -hmm, like Ted. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then we find out it's the Barons because they're like, oh, we're going to rape you so that you're not a virgin anymore. I'm like, why does everyone care about this one girl's virginity? Jail. But then I don't know how, but Killian finds her and he rescues her. He climbs in through the window and saves her before the Barons can do anything to her. And then she's like, I want to get rid of my virginity. Me being a virgin is like making me unsafe safe and so <laughs> she's like i want killian to take my virginity because i i hate him the most out of the three of you oh my god so she's like she's like i need to protect my heart because if i have sex with raf or tristan i might fall in love with them oh my god so instead let me have the guy that i hate the most who oh just like li like like not even joking like three scenes ago he made her give him a blowjob in front of like 20 men oh my god Gross. they do end up having sex and it's one of the last scenes but it is the most anticlimactic scene like he's does he finish in like two seconds no i don't know if it was like i honestly i don't know at this point <laughs> i had turned the audiobook up to like wow. 3.5 speed so like <laughs> i was trying to 
to get this bitch done. The weird thing is he's really gentle with her because like the whole book he has anger issues, right? He's like choking her out. Okay, bye. He's beating her up. But for some reason right now when they have sex for the first time, he's actually pretty gentle. Mm -mm. And obviously she bleeds after and he's like, oh no. All virgins bleed when they have sex. That's just the hymen. Like, whatever. He's, like, trying to, like, reassure her. And she's like, I don't give a fuck. Like, she, at this point, she's, like, so desensitized. She's like, I don't give a fuck. And then, when Killian goes to sleep after they have sex, she goes over to his laptop and she discovers the Excel spreadsheet that has all the point stuff in it. Because we know about the point system. Like, everyone else knows about it. But she's the only one that didn't know about it the entire book. Is this a <clears throat> you lied to me? moment yeah yeah so because uh, so, so she, she thought Raph and Tristan actually cared about her like she hates K Killian mm -hmm. but she thought these men that like raped her three years ago was like care about her and so she like looks at the excel spreadsheet and then she sees that at the, at the end of each point they have a link and this is this is revealed to us too every single no set, they filmed it so like even the scene you know the scene where like she gives Raph a blowjob willingly because she's like well if you can't study I'll give you a blowjob he filmed it he looks at the camera like Oh, and I'm filming this. And so, God. yes, yes, so he's filming like every single little scene. She gets really angry in that moment. She's like, I'm a stupid bitch for believing any of these guys. So then she goes over to the bed where Kalina is sleeping and there's like blood on the sheets because we don't know what they did it. Mm -hmm. And so she takes a picture of it and she emails it to Ted, her stalker. And she's like, because Ted is also obsessed with virginity. I just need you to know that every single fucking male in this book is obsessed with her virginity, mm -hmm. and to, including Ted. Like the, the like weird stalker notes he writes to her is like, I hope you're keeping yourself pure for me. I own you, like Miss Miss Cherry. Or so whatever. she's like, ha ha, not right. No, I, I, I fuck, I fuck. So she, like, <laughs> she sends that to him. And so then the last chapter of the book is in Ted's perspective. And he's like touring a uh, like an apartment with a random real estate agent and he keeps thinking about how I want to kill this. I don't know. I don't know why. I think we're supposed to just believe that like Ted is some sort of like serial killer or something. But he keeps thinking, I really want to kill this real estate agent, whatever. And she's like showing him an apartment like in the city. And then... So he, Ted is not the stepdad. I don't know. Um, it's not revealed to us because this is a series. So then he, um, gets an, he gets like a buzz on his phone and he's getting an email. So he opens the email and it's the picture from Story being like, I'm not a virgin anymore, bitch. Yeah. And so he gets really angry. And so he expresses his anger by shooting the real estate agent in the head. And then the last chapter, like like the last few sentences of the book are basically like Ted being like, I'll teach that little whore what's, what's what. Um, the book ends on a cliffhanger. But here's the thing. I, I need you guys to like stay with me. I will not be finding out who the stalker is. No. I, don't, I don't care. I still believe it's the stepdad. I feel like they're trying to throw us off the trail that it's not the stepdad. But Maybe I, he and the mom got a divorce and that's why he's looking for an apartment. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't honestly don't know. And who I, cares? And I genuinely don't care. This book is fucked up. It's so fucked up. Um, but that's the end of my book. So yours honestly sounds like a walk in the park. No, absolutely. Like, Mine like, was a sweet, sweet romance novel. No, Alice is wholesome. Emily Henry wrote my book. <laughs> I've realized that my line with dark romance is that I need there to be no misogyny. Like I will accept yeah. murder. I will accept dark things. But the minute that the love interests are misogynistic or yeah. like kind of no. rapey, I'm out. I'm, I'm done. Out. I'm done Zo. I hope you guys enjoyed this drunk letter scene. I hope you guys all seek therapy. <laughs> right, right. Um, I'm so sorry that I did subject you to this. If you're interested, I actually did a non-drunk sort of reading vlog for this on my Patreon. So if you want to see my sort of, all of my thoughts like as I was reading, I feel like I was really detailed in this video, but I was even more detailed in the Patreon Were video. Were you sober when you read that book? Yes, it was. That's unfortunate. 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 <laughs> I don't know, are you much different than them? Cause you're selling your pussy just like everyone else. I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm passing away. Because what the fuck? I refuse to believe that my sisters in Christ would write this. Just a little freak all the time. He's just like a little freak. So if you're interested in seeing the little preview that you just saw, then head over to my Patreon. But yeah, I thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> you're all beautiful. Have, Have a nice, nice